Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's time once again for your weekly dose of nightmares. I'm sorry that I didn't post anything last week. It was just very busy for me. Trying to stay physically fit so uh, I can do my day job as well as survive the wastes. Um, that being said, I do have some exciting news. I will be attending um, HorrorCon VR. Look that up on Twitter if you get a chance. On the, 30, the night of the 31st, the uh, 1st and the 2nd of November, and the 31st of October. So, I hope to see you all there. It's going to be exciting. I've never had a booth on anything before. And, uh, yeah, so... I guess I should tell you a story or something. Stay put, let me find you a nightmare. This story is not about a ghost or an encounter with a creepy stranger. It's not even about a near-death experience or something like that. As a matter of fact, I was never in danger during the event I'm about to tell you about. Nonetheless, it's a disturbing memory that I will carry with me until the day I die. I grew up in a small city, the kind of place you could barely call a town if it wasn't for the sheer number of people living there. Downtown was only a couple of blocks long, and in the middle of it was one of the biggest buildings in the area. It was the local movie theater, named after the city. I remember going there when I was very young, about seven years old, and watching the first Pokemon movie. It was probably nothing compared to the theaters we have nowadays, but back then, it was huge for me. I loved it. So, when a few years later, I heard the cinema was going out of business, I felt really sad about it. The building was sold to a religious group that used it for their services. You know the type. Loud music, big crowds, and their arms in the air singing prayers, some having seizures on stage while the pastor yells through a microphone. Every time I walked past the old cinema, I would see the announcements of the congregation where the movie posters would have been. And if they were in session, you could hear them singing from the other side of the street. This group owned the cinema for nearly a decade until the local government bought back the building in order to restore it as a historic landmark of the city. When this happened, I was studying construction with the intent to follow architecture or civil engineering at college, and my class was very lucky to be involved with the cinema's restoration project because two of our teachers were architects working on it. I will always remember the day when we went to visit the old cinema. Our class was small, only a handful of students, but we were all around the same age, so we all shared childhood memories of when the cinema was operational. We ran through the corridors of the auditorium, sat in the chairs just like we did when we were little kids, and began stomping on the wooden floor with our feet, filling the entire room with echoes of our drumming and our laughters. A little ritual, or sorts, everyone used to do right before the beginning of the movie. Once nostalgia time was over, we went back to the purpose of the trip, and began to survey the building. We were very excited because that was a unique opportunity to go into the places we would have never been allowed to otherwise. So we made sure to check every last corner, every single room, no matter how far, no matter how obscure. The first one we found was below the stage. On one of the corners there was a little odor, not very visible, probably because it was meant for maintenance staff only. Behind it we found a long room filled with rusty boilers, part of the old heating system that was no longer in use. The place was a little creepy, with all of those old tanks and pipes crowding the narrow space, but what we found past them was what really freaked us out. This room was small. Very small. It was, after all, basically just leftover space behind the boilers. Yet it contrasted so much with the rest of the area around it, it may as well have been from a different place altogether. The walls were painted a light color, white. I think, but I don't remember it very well because what really got my attention were the drawings in them. There were rainbows, a smiling sun, trees and flowers, and happy little people with smiles on the faces of their dotted eyes. It was a daycare. The whole class and teacher gathered to see the discovery. We were all very confused about the strange placing of this room. 
Okay, we could understand the need for a place to keep the kids that were too little to be amongst the crowd during prayers, or maybe the ones of the people who worked there. But the placing was just... odd. The stage was probably one of the loudest places in the auditorium during the services, and this was right below it, so there was no way it could be a quiet place for children. We left the boiler room and continued our tour through the theater, a little puzzled about our finding but not giving it too much thought. Outside of the auditorium, there were the bathrooms, both in terrible condition, the ticket sale booth, and a huge set of stairs that led to a mezzanine in the auditorium. Half of the seats were totally ruined due to a water leak in the roof, and I cursed these people for not taking proper care of the building. With that part done, all that was left was the projection room on the third floor. Behind the tickets booth, there was a door that led to a spiral stair. I don't remember how tall it actually was, but it must have been over ten meters of metallic steps without a single resting spot. I wasn't exactly an athlete, but I could walk several kilometers with no problem, and rode on a bike to and from school every single day. Yet by the time I reached the top of the stairs, I was exhausted, and I wasn't the only one. All of my classmates complained about how hard it was to walk up there. After a short break to catch our breath, we moved on to explore the third floor. It was roughly a narrow passageway with a couple of divisions to form different rooms, but it was more than enough for what it was made for. The first room from the stairs was a storage deposit, probably where they kept the movies and other equipment, and except for some trash, it was mostly empty. The second room was the one we were all excited to see, the projector room. The old machine was so big that it was still there, and there were even some pieces scattered around. It was quite a piece of history, and we were all very thrilled to check it out. So no one really bothered to move on to the very last room until we were about to leave. And there, we saw it again. There was a train in this one instead of a rainbow. Something was written on it, big colorful letters, something about Christ. I can't remember it well. The drawings were a bit old. The paint slightly peeled from the walls, but the colors were just as cheerful as you would expect for a place where children play. My heart sank to my stomach as I came to the realization of what this place really was. The one behind the boilers probably serving the same purpose. I took notice of how isolated the room was, literally the furthest away you could get, possibly, from everyone else. I thought about the three floors of stairs and imagined what it would have to be like for a child to walk all the way up, only to end up in that room, the room with the colorful train on the wall. My classmates and I exchanged horrified expressions as I knew they were thinking the same thing. We never visited the theater again. Even though we continued with the restoration project for several months and we never talked about those two rooms. Cases of molestation in the church are well known by everyone. To the point that the pedo priest is practically a cliché. But this is the kind of thing that happens in some places far away in another city even in another country. You never imagine it can happen in the very same town you live, the place where you grew up, in the very same building where you once watched a Pokemon movie when you were seven years old. <laughs> Churches always did give me the creeps in just the littlest of ways, and in this case, a very big way. But as I always do with these stories, I want you to tell me in the comments if you think this is true or fiction. Maybe they found a secret dungeon for children in this uh, X movie theater. Or maybe this is all a work of someone's wild imagination. This has been Corporal Creepy reminding you all to stay creepy. <laughs> Churches always did give me the creeps in just the littlest of ways, and in this case, a very big way. But as I always do with these stories, I want you to tell me in the comments if you think this is true or fiction. Maybe they found a secret dungeon for children in this uh, X movie theater. Or maybe this is all a work of someone's wild imagination. This has been Corporal Creepy, reminding you all to stay creepy. <laughs>
churches always did give me the creeps in just the littlest of ways, and in this case, a very big way. But as I always do with these stories, I want you to tell me in the comments if you think this is true or fiction. Maybe they found a secret dungeon for children in this uh, X movie theater. Or maybe this is all a work of someone's wild imagination. This has been Corporal Creepy reminding you all to stay creepy. <laughs> Churches always did give me the creeps in just the littlest of ways, and in this case, a...